So welcome to the Greenacre Sports Partnership, upskilling staff in PE to contribute to a whole school impact webinar. We thought that this was an important webinar to, to kind of do for everybody uh, because we get a lot of schools and a lot of PE leads kind of saying to us, you know, we really need to push PE sport and physical activity in our school and we're not getting the support from SLT. So how can we do that? What can we do to raise the profile of PE sport and physical activity? And it is about those whole school impacts and how they can benefit um, the school as a whole and the community as a whole. So that's what we're going to explore further today. I'm Vicky Bell, I'm the Sports Partnership Manager and I'm a PE teacher as well. And I've worked for the partnership since 2008. So we've been, we've been around quite a long time now. Um, last year, we were lucky enough to win the Association for PE uh, National Award for Professional Practice in PE Sport and Physical Activity. And that's really been a highlight for us so far um, for the partnership. So the first thing I'd like you to do is just for 30 seconds, either write down or just in your head, are you, as um, the PE lead or a member of the school community teaching staff, are you able to define the difference between PE, sport and physical activity? I'm just going to give you 30 seconds, just either in your head or write them down, just define those um, three things, PE, sport and physical activity. Okay, so to ensure that we do have a fully rounded curriculum um, and a, an enriched curriculum, we really do need to make sure that we do offer physical education, school sport and physical activity and that we can really understand e the differences between each and the importance that each play. So physical education, hopefully you've got down that it's planned, it's progressive and it's part of the school curriculum. It's teaching students and pupils to learn to move and move to learn. It does have physical activity in it, but it allows children to experience a broad range of activities and sport specific activities. School sport, that's the structured learning that will take place out of the curriculum. So for examples, any school games events, any breakfast, lunch or after school activities, and they are sport specific and they, they usually link to something in the community. So they provide a pathway into the community. And then we've got physical, physical activity and that is really broad. Um, it's a term that describes bodily movement, posture and balance. And as long as it requires some kind of energy, it's classed as physical activity. So that can be a walk, a walk outdoors, that could be hoovering, that can be cycling, rollerblade. It could be any kind of housework or gardening. It is really broad. Now in our context and the upskilling of staff for each of those, for physical ed education, we'd want to, we would want PE specific CPD for the staff. We'd want them to understand that each of the lessons need to be uh, scaffolded. They need to be progressive and there needs to become some kind of assessment and structured scheme of work in place. For school sport, it needs to be sport specific. That might be a level one or a level two coaching course. It's something that will develop sport as a whole. And physical activity and upskilling staff and physical activity, for us that would be broadening the opportunities throughout, throughout the school day. And what can teachers do to offer the minimum 30 minutes required in school or support by 60 minutes minimum physical activity per day? And we have got a workshop on that next week um, for anyone who's interested on how we can provide more opportunities for physical activity throughout the school day. The one thing that we've got at the moment and for the now is the primary P PE and sport premium funding. Who knows whether that's going to be in place as of September. Um, fingers crossed it's going to continue with, the, um, with physical activity sport being so high on the agenda for well-being and health at the moment with um, the coronavirus. So fingers crossed it will continue. But for now, the Department for Education guidance states two key um, sentences which I picked out for this particular webinar um, on the upskilling of staff. That's to build capacity and capability within the school to ensure that improvements made now will benefit pupils joining the school and in future years. There's three key words in there that I will explore on the next slide. That's capacity, 
capability and future years, so the sustainability. And then the second paragraph, pro provide staff with professional development, mentoring, training and resources to help them teach PE and sport more effectively to all pupils and impede physical activity across the school. And in there we see the words improvements and in the earlier, sorry, in the first paragraph, improvements. And then in the second one, opportunities. We want to provide our pupils with further opportunities through professional development. But why? Why do we want to upskill our staff? Why can't we just buy in specialist coaches? Why do we want to upskill our staff? And this is the question that I think would most SLT will come back with, like, why upskill our staff? Why, when we've got the funding, not outsource it? Why, why now, why our staff in schools are teaching staff? So looking at those five words from the um, sentences earlier in the previous slide, capacity. We want to upskill staff in primary schools to build a workforce that can enrich and develop the PE curriculum. PE and being a PE lead shouldn't just the onus shouldn't just be on one person. We should be developing our teaching workforce in schools to build capacity to support each other. The, the more capacity we have as teaching staff, the more opportunities we have to enrich our curriculum and offer to our children in our schools. Capability. We want to increase staff knowledge in areas of the PE national curriculum. So we can provide a broad range of activities and expertise and support each other. If we're able to put each member of teaching staff or even one from each year group onto a training course every year, they can come back and then they can deliver whole school training to the rest of the school. So from one person being out of school for maybe a day or two, they then have a massive impact on the rest of the teaching staff and the rest of the whole school. That then can lead to improvements, new ideas, sharing good practice and self-reflection. And I truly believe self-reflection we do as teachers every single day. And self-reflection can lead to positive changes. Whether that's staff having the confidence to write a scheme of work or running an after school club that they may never have done before, they're then providing the further opportunities that the children need to access whilst at school. One of the key things about the primary P and sport funding, premium funding, is that it must be sustainable. It needs to be sustainable. We won't have this money forever. So the upskilling of staff ensures a sustainable impact, uh, impact in the teaching of PE for our future generations, not just for our children now, but for anybody coming into our school. And some people might turn around and say, okay, but we have a, we have a big staff turnover. Okay, but you're still upskilling the workforce of teachers as a whole in the, in the, in the country. Yes, we might have an up, a turnover, but you're still having that impact of upskilling teachers in primary PE, sport and physical activity. And then opportunities. The more the staff know, the greater the opportunities and experiences the children will have. School's about creating memories and we want to create positive memories of PE, sport and physical activity to ensure they have a lifelong love of it, to keep them healthy for the future, to keep them their well-being sound. We really need to broaden the opportunities we have for our pupils to ensure we're offering them a curriculum that meets the needs of every single pupil. I recently went on a AFPI, Association for PE course, and Andy Fratwell and Sue Wilkinson presented. And it was really evident to see, they had a fantastic slide, and if I can find a copy of it, I'll add it to our website um, after this with, with the presentation. And it was the difference between the outcomes and the impact, and defining those as well. So the input is the funding that we get, the primary P and sport premium money. Then we have outcomes, and then we have impact. And we do have a journey between in, income, in, input and outcomes, but concentrating on now the outcomes and the impact. So the outcomes can really be data driven. You know, how many, how many students are now leadership, um, have had leadership training? Have we had an increase in the amount of students achieving the 25 metre national curriculum swimming target because the funding allows us to do top up swimming? 
we've had more children attending school games events, more after school clubs delivered, and improved performances in PE due to an improved scheme of work. So progression is there, progression is better. So we've got the data-driven outcomes on the stats, the numbers of, to show the improvement, the percentage improvements, and the numbers are improving year on year. But what impacts is that actually having on you, you as staff and on your children and as a whole school? Now, this is one of my favorite kind of slides I, I put together. Outcomes are great, but what are the actual whole school impacts? So I, um, I did a blog not long ago. It's two or three minutes long. Um, the Association for PE asked me to do it. So I'm just going to show it to you now. So two minutes. Whilst watching it, can you just write down or think about what I'm saying and what, what actual whole school impacts are coming out of, the, out of what I'm saying? And are they relevant to your school? And do they happen in your school? So it's only two or three minutes long. Um, enjoy. Hello, I'm Vicky Bell. I'm the Sports Partnership Manager at Greenex Sports Partnership and we're based in Midway, Kent. We were established in 2005 when Greenacre Academy were awarded sports college status and they have been instrumental in allowing us to be sustainable in our delivery. I recently met with Sue Wilkinson and Andy Frackwell from the Association for PE and they encouraged me to do this blog to really celebrate and promote the positive impacts the primary PE and sports premium is having in our area. I have a core team of four qualified teachers, all with PE as a specialism, and we go in and do a lot of upskilling of primary teachers. We work with those teachers on a one-to-one -one basis, with their class experiencing the PE journey they experience every term. Now, why is this important? What's this done? Now, this has increased confidence in those teachers. It's allowed them to be able to provide more opportunities to enrich their curriculum and to provide opportunities for their pupils that their pupils may not have ever experienced before. It, allow, it allows a love of learning. It, it allows misconceptions of primary PE, school sport and physical activity um, to be addressed. It allows those staff to be role models. We've also seen an increase in concentration levels in schools and in classrooms, especially with EYFS and Key Stage 1. These pupils are learning core stability, fine motor skills, all things they need to be able to do to access their learning, to sit at a desk, to hold a pen. Things that allow them to continue their education successfully. We've seen a decrease in behaviour issues. One school uses primary PE, school sport and physical activity as a tool. It is used to engage pupils during these challenging times. It teaches them the importance of teamwork, communication, it allows them to have a positive experience and not be getting in trouble during times where they should be allowed to, you know, de-stress from the classroom environment. We've had an increase in attendance as people want to come to school to be part of a school team, to represent their school, or to just be successful, to have that increase in knowledge, understanding, not just the thinking me, the physical me, and the feeling me. This is what the primary PE and school sports premium is doing in my area. We're also training leaders from Key Stage 1 all the way through to, through to Key Stage 5. We're part of the Skills for Life Trust. Soft skills are embedded in every single one of our lessons. Leaders don't just want to be leaders of PE. They want to be eloquent students. They want to greet visitors in schools. They want to speak in whole school assemblies. They want to perform and show what they can do. These pupils are learning skills that are for life, not just for the now, in whatever they want to go on to do. They will be successful at it because of these key skills that have been embedded in them. Now, the primary PE and sports premium has not been successful in all areas, and there has been some negativity, but there's also been some real whole school impacts which need to be celebrated. Fingers crossed the funding continues and we continue making an impact but if it doesn't, let's reflect on the positives it, it has had and the sustainable changes that has been made. I hope you find it interesting. Um, follow us on Twitter at GSP underscore Greenacre um, and DM us or email me if you want any further information. Thank you. Okay, so that's the blog um, I did. 
And it really did clearly identify the impact that the funding is having and the whole school impacts. So one of the main things, and just to summarize the impacts from that video is, we, the increase in confidence in staff and students, which leads to an increase in opportunities for pupils. It then creates those positive memories we want children to have. It creates a love of learning and knowledge for lifelong participation. If our staff have got increased confidence, this will only reflect in the teaching of PE, sport and physical activity. If staff are more confident, the students will get a better experience of PE, sport and physical activity. And I think that's key. It's really evident to see in schools, the teachers that had a really bad experience in school of PE, as they're actually probably the ones who won't go out in the rain, will have an excuse not to go outside and do PE because it's slightly windy. And we want to really address those misconceptions. And that's the ne next one. We want to address the negative misconceptions of PE. We want all pupils to be involved. We want all pupils to feel success in PE, to get excited to attend PE, sport and physical activity events. If they have a positive experience, they're going to have lifelong participation, which is positive on their well-being and positive on their health. It also helps them to learn softer skills, whatever we're gonna, they're going to go on to do in the next stages of life. We've seen increased concentration in the classroom. Pupils in EYFS and Key Stage 1 are developing their fundamental movement skills through PE, sport and physical activity. These assist them to hold a pen as they've got fine motor skills or sit up straight at their desk because they've got the core stability to do so. It supports every pupil having the right to pro progress in their very own learning journey. Every child has the right to learn. And providing sport, physical activity and PE at a younger age, we're providing them the core fundamentals they need to be able to learn. We've seen a decrease in negative behaviour as pupils are learning the softer life skills that are taught in PE, sport and physical activity. And therefore, we're seeing better engagement in the classroom. When we, in PE, we see students showing respect, teamwork, communication, resilience. And it's all these things that are then being reflected into the classroom. They're then wanting to learn. They're then wanting to impress their teachers. We've seen a positive impact on attendance. As students who participate in school sports teams want to participate in PE and want to impress. They need to be in school to be allowed to attend your school games events, attend fixtures, attend trips, they need to be in school. And they want to impress so much that they've, we've had seen an positive impact on attendance. The development of life skills, as I said earlier, through PE sport and physical activity, we don't just teach how to throw a ball or how to kick a football. We teach key life skills such as communication, respect, perseverance. And it's all these skills that are needed, whether it's further education, an apprenticeship, or a career choice. And on top of that, we teach life skills such as water safety. That's not just for them now. That's, a, that's something that everybody needs in their lives. And finally, we see through the upskill of staff, a broader and rich curriculum, which creates opportunities for students to create excitement, a love for PE, sport and physical activity. That's allowing us to organise trips, have a progressive scheme of work and a scaffolded lessons, which allow children to build on their knowledge, which allow them to get excited. It allows them to feel some kind of success. We need to create those positive memories of PE, sport and physical activity while children are at school. So they have that lifelong passion to support them with their well-being and health in the future. So that's the um, summaries of the impacts. We are going to now, um, I will invite you to unmute your microphones, put on your camera so we can have a discussion between us. Um, so thank you for listening. I will um, take the PowerPoint off and put my video on myself.
All this information will um, go on to our website as well, so you can watch it again, you can send it out to other staff and there'll be some resources to support as well. 